Hello, this is Prophet Six, Family Prophet to the Angel of the Church of the Laodicea, spoken of in Revelation chapter 3, 14 through 20. Now, this is another installment of a response video that I am making specifically for one of the subscriber, subscribers of my channel called CC Motivates You for you, to you. But, so, I wanted to deal with something because I, I came up with something else that I was thinking about when I woke up early this morning. Woke up about 2 o'clock this morning and just wanted to be with God, pray, focus in my prayer, keep my prayer, and, and you know, and not wander off, you know. It seemed like more, you know, when, when you know, Christians... Uh, we wander off in our prayers, you know, keep it, you know, stop wandering off, come back. You know, we start thinking about other things in our prayers and that's because we're not focused on Jesus in our prayer. So I did that this morning, had a really good time and was my, my spirit was encouraged, you know? And so, um, now it's about five o'clock in the morning. So I've been up for some hours. I'm going to take me a nap and then I'm going to head on out and, uh, you know, do the things that I need to do. So what I like to say here is, oh yeah, I wanted to bring up, the reason why I'm making this video is because I wanted to address something. I think it's kind of unfair, it, not kind of unfair, it is unfair, when we see various religious groups and cults come up and they come up with a legitimate reason of why they exist they in inside the tenets of their their belief no however erroneous uh, oftentimes you find that there is a there is a valid reason or valid gripe that they have that is not being addressed in whatever religion they broke off of or in in christianity at large and so let's and so to be fair to the Hebrew Israelites, I want to bring up something. Yeah, there is something legit, a legitimate concern in the name of God, what his real name is, what the real name of the son is. You see, so there are there's some legitimacy to that. And the fact that Christianity, as we know it, does not address that, it creates a vacuum of knowledge curiosity and just exploration that Christians are not ready to delve into. And so as a result, you have the Hebrew Israelite religion and those that are of that, that, that hue. And, but they do have some legitimate concerns. So I don't want you to get the impression from the previous videos that I have made that are response videos to comments for in particular cc motivate to you or for you let me see which one is it so i don't yeah motivates you you too okay the letter u and two the the numeral two okay so yeah there's a legitimate reason of why there is some legitimate reason of why all almost all these religions exist in some facet or another but None of them are free of false doctrine, error, none of them. I don't care if they say they, all of them say they go by the Bible. You know, if you, if you met the devil today, he would say the Bible and the Bible only. I, I know it. And the reason why I know it, because every devil that I've met that calls himself a Christian, I'm not saying all Christians are devils, but all devils that I met, that claim to be Christians, they said a Bible, the Bible only, King James and King James only. Now, one of the one of the reasons why the Hebrew Israelites exist is because you know Christianity, along with the Catholic religion and and the Arab religion, the Arabs and stuff, the Muslim religion and Islam. They had a, a hand in slavery. And so the Hebrew Israelites, they, you know, and, and because the Hebrew Israelites, they exist out of a vacuum of knowledge 
concerning the fact that God's people had to be people of color as well. And predominantly, I would say, they, they had to be just looking at the region of the world that they in. And so the Hebrew Israelites, you know, they, they love to teach on um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy chapter 4, and, uh, and, 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 and many other texts that are similar to this in, the, in, in, the, in what they would call the Torah, you see, where God gave the curses and the blessings to the children of Israel. And, and it, is, it is largely ignored that when Jesus was born, he had to be a person of color. He had to be. I mean, he, like they say, this is one of the, the things that they chomp at the bit about. And it is legitimate. He hid in Africa when he was a baby after Herod had put out an edict to kill all the children two years old and under. He had to be a person of color. You couldn't be of European descent at that time and be in Africa and hide. I, I don't believe it. Even though Rome was a European nation and was a dominant world power, even, and they had supremacy over Egypt, you, you couldn't hide in, in, in there and be in Egypt. And be, you see what I'm saying? Uh, they look at the, uh, in the book of Revelation where this says that his feet are like brass. In the book of Daniel, the same thing. He had hair like wool, you see. And Christianity is don't want to give the give Christianity as we know it, which is basically basically fixtured under what we what I would call white supremacy or Caucasian supremacy or European supremacy. They don't want to, not even the blacks. Yeah, they have. Yeah, I know there's blacks that give a little, you know, they give a little side lip service and they print these Bibles with black characters in them and stuff. But it really is not addressed. You know, what, and, and, and the role that Christianity, you know, Jesus said that you're going to be the head and not the tail. Who is the head of the world right now? Basically, a quasi-Christian nation called America and the European nations, the quasi-Christian -Europe, uh, European nations. Jesus said in the curse in Deuteronomy 28, which I believe, that you're going to be the tail and not the head. You're going to be beneath and not above. Why? Because you don't obey my laws. That's the curse that's resting on God's people. Now, where I differ with the Hebrew Israelites, like I said in, in the previous videos, that I don't believe that God's people can only be black. It's, it's impossible. He said, I spread my people to the four corners of the earth. And look at all the nations and all the girlfriends that, uh, that uh, Solomon had. Look at all the girlfriends that he had and all the temples and idol worshipers that he had installed in Israel and in the temple of God. I believe that some of them may have uh, became faithful citizens of the kingdom and were adopted into the faith of Israel and mingled among them and had children. I mean, Israel for a long time before Solomon and before David, they were a nomadic tribe of people okay and remember israel never could stop fornicating with the other nations economically spiritually worship they never could they always were fornicating with their other nations and not just fornicating in the sexual sense but in the religious sense in the economic sense god wanted his people to be separate they never did read anything in the new test in the old testament read anything god kept telling them don't 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 marry their daughters i mean one of the one of the, the final straws that broke the camel back even before the nation of Israel came on the scene in Genesis chapter six, one of the final straws, the sons of God were marrying the daughters of men. They were marrying heathens, not angels as sent many say. They were marrying unconverted women. And what that, would, what that does, it dilutes the kingdom of God. Because when you marry a heathen, you're going to generally raise up heathen children. 
because you're never going to be able to convert the mother or the father that you married. Don't be unequally yoked. So, so from the vacuum of Christianity, basically taking a predominant role in enslaving Africans, West Africans, blacks, Indians, Native Indians, Native Americans, that created a vacuum and the Hebrew Israelite religion, the Rastafarian religion became popular. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I and 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 and, and I could understand the legitimacy of why that would happen. But it don't mean that you should go create a whole new religion. I mean, slaves were forced to become, you know, missionaries would go over to West Africa with the slave uh, traders and they would convert and do evangelism on slave ships. So they would convert you and, to, and put you in slavery in Jesus name. Why do I say in Jesus name? Because the people that are doing this claim to be Christians. In the, in the context of the Messiah, the Son of God, and that black people are a lesser race. And so he, the Hebrew Israelite religion became popular. So there are some legitimate concerns. And another thing that you never hear Christians really deal with is Deuteronomy 28. Does Deuteronomy 28 have a large bearing on the West African slave trade that began with the Arabs and ended and, 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 and crescendoed and exploded among Christians? This is how I know that Christianity is a gutter religion. The, 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 the relationship that the Europeans had with Christ could not stop them from becoming the leaders in the slave trade. It couldn't. The type of relationship that they had with God, it couldn't. The type of evangelism, the type of missionary work that they were doing during the slave trade, it couldn't stop them. It could, the pilgrims, the, pu the Puritans, it couldn't make them pure. It was something inherently wrong with it. And as a result, the slaves inherit a lot of the baggage that came along with that European and, uh, you know, Eurocentric uh, ideology and religion. I don't understand why Christians in America don't talk about race and slavery more. I don't understand it. And so as a result of that, other religions pop up that actually do. And, and actually, they make that their main thing. No, it's the gospel. It says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek that first. Then, then let's deal with all these other things. And all these other things shall be added unto you. What's going to be added unto you when you deal with those other topics? Wisdom. The perspective of God. So this is prophet six, the family prophet to the angel of the church of the lay of the sins and uh, uh, CC motivates you too. Now you see, I really went off. Now you, now I don't know if you was expecting all of this, you know, all this time to be spent on your question, but this is one of the reasons why I don't really deal with questions. You know, if they don't have a, you know, a general application, uh, you you mailed me a, uh, you, you cited a video and I went and looked at it. I looked at about seven minutes of the video and, uh, I'm not making a video on that because, you know, it's just one guy, you know, it's just one guy and his personal view, you know, and of uh, and his personal study of the, of the Bible. And so, you know, if you want to talk about that, we can, but I'm just not making a video of that. But if you really want to know what I think about what this guy is teaching, I could tell you because in the first first few minutes of the video, way off. And I noticed that when whenever you form a false doctrine, usually the very first thing that you you, you the foundation of what you is is off. So God bless you all. God bless you and keep you for the other people and guests that are listening and watching this video. Hope it's being a blessing for you. And God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.